belt and pulley systems work similarly to the way that your trains work, except instead of the neighboring pulleys going in opposite directions, they go in the same direction. So with the belt and pulley system, we'll have one pulley, another pulley, and they'll be connected by a belt that's wrapped around them. So we'll have an input and an output. And because they're connected by this belt, we know that the belt speed has to be the same, VB. So the belt speed is moving this way or it's moving that way. We know that VB is the same for both. So R1 omega 1 equals R2 omega 2 but no sign change. So then omega 2 equals R1 over R2 omega 1. So if we, for example, put some numbers into this and we'll say R1 equals 2 centimeters R2 equals five centimeters, and omega one equals one radian per second. Then omega two equals two over five. And we don't have to convert these to meters because the units are canceling. They're both in centimeters. Times one equals zero point four radians per second equals omega two. Now for reality check, we just say, okay, this gear is bigger. So if it's bigger and it's got the same linear speed on the edge, it must be rotating more slowly. So 0 0.4 is less than one. That's our reality check. In this problem, we have a complex belt and pulley system. We are given the size of each pulley and the input speed, and we need to figure out output speed, magnitude, and direction. So we know that the speed at the output is just going to be the input speed times all of these um, gear size ratios. So we'll have driver over driven. So we'll have RA over RB times RC over RD equals one times three over one times four over two equals six radians per second. And we know that in a belt and pulley system, the directions of motion do not change. So all of these are going to be clockwise.